Hello, hello. All right, so today I'm going to answer a question that I have seen coming up in the group a little bit about whether or not it's okay to have like a friend with benefits, like a fuck buddy, when you're trying to manifest your partner. Like, is that okay? What are the energetics of that? Like, how do you navigate that whole thing? So like I said in the post, it may not be your favorite thing to hear what I'm gonna tell you, um, but these are the energetics of like what's really going on when we're making those decisions and when we're thinking about, should I do that, should I not do that? So here we go. All right, so I asked a question on a post a couple days ago, just like what does it mean an unavailable man? Like what does that mean to you? And we had some interesting conversations happening on that post. And so I saw this theme about, you know, like, but it's fun. Like, should I, can I just keep him around? Like, why not? So yes, this one is for you, Sarah. Um, although I was thinking about this for a while, it's not, you're not the only one who's asked this question before. Um, so I thought I'd come on here and just give my response to it because it's longer than I want to just type on the post. There's a lot I have to say about it. So like I said, this may be uncomfortable. It may not be your, it might be triggering, maybe not your favorite answer from me. So just like take some breaths and just allow yourself to just be curious about it and be like, okay, what if it were true? Can I just like think about this and just let it in and look at it from this angle? So the first thing I'm gonna say is that we live in a culture that normalizes friends with benefits kinds of relationships. And while there's nothing wrong with it, it doesn't work for you if you're trying to manifest your partner. There are issues when you're trying to manifest your partner. So here are the energetics of it. So this unavailable man, he's typically upfront about what he wants and what he doesn't want. So if you ask him, he'll tell you like, I just want to like have sex with you. I just want to spend time with you. Like I'm not available to be your boyfriend. He will tell you that, right? That that's the kind of guy this is. And he's a lot of fun right? He is really hot. That's why we want to spend time with him. He typically will say he's our friend and that the sex is really good, right? And so these are the reasons we want to keep him around. And so the question is like, why not occasionally go hang out with him while I'm manifesting my partner? Like I've got time to spare. Why not? Is there a problem with it? And so I'm going to say something you probably don't want to hear because these guys are fun to hang out with. But I'm gonna tell you that if you're trying to manifest your right partner, you have to clear the space of all of the men who are the wrong men. So if you've got this guy or any other guy in your life and he's taking up your time and your energy and your sexual energy as well, then he's actually filling up energetic space that the right man needs in order to enter your life. So you're literally like energetically blocking the right man from entering your life with all these other men who are already in it. And so you're sending this unclear signal to the universe and it doesn't say like, I've made space for the one, I'm ready for the one. There's all these other guys there. So there's no space for him to arrive in your life. So I've said before that if you are attracting, attracted to choosing unavailable men, then this is a mirror about something in you being unavailable to love. And so what I actually want to do with this live now is actually dig into that because that's like the more important piece. So right here is a perfect example of how that can work. So if you rip off the band-aid that is this unavailable man, the space he's taking up in your life, then you would have to be open to a lot of love from a fully present man because this man is, is filling some need, right? Like the sexual need, maybe the, the having the masculine energy in your life need, right? And so if you remove that man from your life and you say, I'm only here now for a man who is all of the things that I want, not just part of the package, the truth is that what we would find underneath is that there's some wound there that you're really not ready for the, this kind of man, the man who's fully 100% all the things. And so I guarantee that you are only able right now to take a little from a man, just some of his time, some of his energy, some of his attention. And this is not a conscious thing. This is at the level of the love blueprint, right? And this is why it feels okay to be with this man who can only give you a little of himself that actually feels comfortable. 
and he doesn't ask for anything back from you. That feels comfortable, right? Because deep down, we don't feel worthy of more than that. A woman who's like truly feeling worthy of a man's full heart is not going to be settling for less than that. And she can bring that man in so quickly and so easily. So it's not even a like either or, right? And it is the most incredible thing in the world to have that kind of love. But the truth is that a man who is offering his whole heart to you, it likely scares the shit out of you. So he has probably been, there has been a man like this in your life at some point, and I guarantee you ran. I guarantee that you talked yourself out of him. I guarantee that you found problems with him. You may have even found it suspicious that he was so into you, okay? So I remember I did, coming 100% personal experience. I actually asked myself, there must be something wrong with him that he's so consistent and so persistent and so into me. Like the logic behind that was that there's actually, there's something wrong with him because I'm actually not deserving of that kind of love and devotion. And that was in the back of my mind. It was not a conscious thing, that connection, but that was what it was, right? And so the truth is that I didn't actually like myself enough. I didn't think I was worthy enough. So, and this was not conscious, right? So if someone really wanted me, and if someone was really persistent and present and 100% there, I actually thought there was something wrong with him. Like I was suspicious of him, <laughs> which is so crazy, but this is literally how it's working. So the other possibility here, and they're actually usually to go together, um, is that you don't trust love. And we'll get into that in a little bit. What does that mean? So right now, I just want you to drop your guard and get really curious and ask yourself, do you actually believe that you're worthy of a man's whole heart? his whole attention, his whole energy. Just ask yourself. And then look at how that's gone in the past. Have you allowed that in and have you maintained it? Because sometimes we can allow it in, but then we cannot maintain it. We have to get rid of it. We have to push it away. We have to destroy it in some way. So if not, if you couldn't allow that in and maintain it, that is literally your answer. So if a man were actually to be 100% yours, 100% present for you, 100% there, would you run? Would you find problems with him? Would you be suspicious of him? Would you block it or sabotage in some way? Go look at what you've done in the past. So this is why we are attracted to unavailable partners. And it comes from our own unavail unavailability to ourselves, right? We're actually like unavailable to ourselves. And we have this, and it's totally unconscious, but we have a disbelief in our worthiness of love. That's why we would settle. So this is the result of childhood attachment woundings. It's usually a father wounding. In fact, it's like almost, it's, it is a father wounding. So it's a father who died, that was mine. Uh, it's a father who just wasn't present in your life, like he wasn't in your life, or he wasn't emotionally present in your life. But this is like a father thing. So we always attract at the level of our wounds. And by attract, I mean attracted to. These are the people who we notice. These are the, the people we're bringing into our lives. And by people, I mean like the men, right? This is love. So our wounds are responsible for our level of self-worth and our level of self-love or lack of it, right? So that's why that's who we're matching with, right? People who mirror how we see ourselves, what we believe we're worthy of. So the unavailable man, he literally is just your father, right? He matches that father wound, and that is why you are attracted to him. So because you learned that you were only deserving of so much love and attention, and it always had a cap, it would end. And so we, we learn to just better protect myself, right? And keeping this man in your life on the back burner is a manifestation of that. Even though this isn't how you consciously think about it, now you might be aware because I'm bringing it to your awareness. So typically it will like feel empowering, right? Like, oh, I have this like hot, like fuck buddy, but none of the stuff that I don't like about men, right? Like he isn't involved in my actual life. I don't have to be responsible for anything with him. He's not responsible for me, right? And that, that we say that's empowering. But you know that you could have incredible sex and a man who is devoted to you, right? You could have both. Not hard when you do the work. So... Now again, you get to do whatever you want. You get to do whatever matches this part of the journey for you. And maybe this is your part of the journey. That's okay. Everything is okay. 
but this is the energetics of master of manifesting that real partner the 100 percent present for you man right so if you want him it's going to require something else so here's another one this is the other piece that i said i was going to talk about so this like i'm an independent woman who can have sex with no strings attached i can just have fun with men i don't i don't want anything more than that from him all of that is actually just hiding this hyper independence and hyper independence of this kind is actually a result of trauma in childhood it's the attachment wounding it's the father stuff right and so in childhood at some point you learned that you had to kind of take care of things on your own you had to be on your own you could not depend on other people to be there for you so maybe there was some neglect from parents there was disappointment from the father who couldn't or wouldn't be there for you and so it sounds like it's a choice and like it's an empowered choice to choose this man who is not there for you but behind it is a lack of trust in other people to be there for you right and so you learn that you couldn't depend on other people you couldn't depend on men specifically uh, but it, this can show up in other areas of our life as well and so you don't want to be in a situation where you would be disappointed or hurt or forgotten men will always drop the ball sooner or later right this is in our minds and so this is why you have a man who isn't there for you to begin with right he 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 will leave sooner or later. This is not a committed relationship, right? And then we can treat him like he's disposable, right? And so this is protection. This is protection against heartbreak. You know, don't even allow it to happen. Don't even allow it to go there. And by the way, you may still fall in love with this unavailable man and you'll still get heartbroken. That happens too, right? And so the unavailable friend with benefits is a way of protecting our heart. So nothing gets and no one gets hurt. And so while we say I'm, I'm also manifesting my partner, you cannot be doing both. So what is true is we just don't get, we don't allow love in, right? The, the deep love, the love that could hurt us does not get in. And so we're looking at the false masculine. This is the protection. This is the armor. It's operating right here in this situation. You know, the I'm just independent. I'll just take care of myself. It's a protection against being hurt, being left, being disappointed. And we can go back and we can look, okay, but what's the, what does the core wound say about how I see myself? That I'm not worthy of love, right? I'm not worthy of love. I'm not good enough. So that's how this all ties together. So I just want you to take a couple deep breaths right now, because that was a lot. So just take a couple deep breaths and see if you can connect right now with that very young little girl in you who felt that so deeply and who went through that experience, who's now playing out in the way that you're living your life and how you're choosing your men and what you're allowing or not allowing from men and what you're receiving or not receiving. See if you can just find that girl because she's, she's wounded. She's got some pain. And just see if you can just hold her for a moment. Just be there for her. So when these things are healed, and when they are shifted, this is when literally the right man will appear. This is when I met Eric. It was that moment when I actually really cleared, really healed that stuff. So often before this happens, before we work with the stuff in the way, before we heal, then we may actually have that man who could be really, really right for us in our vicinity and we do not even recognize him. We don't see him, we don't recognize him. He's like not on our radar. And you may, you, like, just disinterest in this person. Pass him on the street, not notice him. When these things shift, suddenly you do see him. Because you're available for something different afterwards. So here's what I want to leave you with. Attachment trauma can be healed. It can be rewired. And it is always this that is blocking out manifestations and all kinds of abundance. Not just love, but also everywhere else in our life. We, we are blocking. And so the inner child doesn't actually feel safe or lovable. She can be healed, right? That's a big part of the work I do with my clients. It's a part of the work where we get to heal those deep core wounds and core self-beliefs that come from those childhood experiences that cause us to recreate these things in our lives. So just take this, right, just take this in right now. You are worthy of having intentional, real, full support. You are worthy of having a true 
partnership, a true deep relationship. You are worthy of love. You are worthy of having your heart held by a man who is so present for you. You are the one for him. You are worthy of being truly seen by a man. You are worthy of being cherished. You are worthy of being adored. You are. So you're worthy of someone saying to you that you are the most incredible woman in the world and has having his actions back that up, having him show up in your life like that's true, which these unavailable men do not do because they don't see us that way, right? So you don't have to earn this. You don't have to prove it. You don't have to trade for it. You are just worthy now. So take a breath. Just let that land. So I just do want to offer that this is what my work is, is part of a large part of the work that I do with my clients. This is a big part of what we're doing together. So my work is dealing with your patterns with men. That's where we look at your patterns in depth and identify the root causes of where these patterns are coming from and why you don't have that man that you really deeply desire. That's the first part is just like what's going on, right? The second part we're going to work with where the patterns come from. This is done on two different levels. It's done on the cognitive level. That's the level of your, the mindset, your thoughts, your beliefs, your stories. And then on the level below that, which is the level of the trauma and the core wounds that we're carrying about ourselves. So this is like healing the inner child kind of work. And there's actually more than one inner child. So this is all of those child parts that need healing and the other parts that exist in order to protect you and de-armoring them so that they can take on different roles in your life as an adult. Because what you needed as a child is not what you need as an adult anymore, right? And they don't know that you're a grown up. They don't know that you're an adult. That's old coding, right? And so that old coding is getting in the way of you making different decisions for yourself now, right? And having a different kind of relationship now. This is the work that really, really increases your availability to love. It raises your self-worth and self-confidence and it changes your entire situation with men completely. So just from this, you start manifesting a whole different level of man into your life. Then we get really, really clear on who is that man. So I help you identify potential candidates, where to find them, the things that you're not noticing about why this may not be the right person, right? And then we go into aligning with the dream partner, right? We look at specific things that you need to be doing in your life and what's working against you. A lot of this is ener energetics. A lot of this is aligning with your authentic self, the self that is truly self-loving. There are certain actions and things that need to be done that literally change your manifestations. So for example, you know, do you stop seeing the men that you're being casual with? How much of a chance do you give a man? How long before you throw in the towel? How many dates, right? What do you allow from a man and what do you not allow? Setting boundaries, all of these things. And then I help you decode men faster because a lot of the things that I see is that when we are wrapped up in a man, we do not see the red flags and we overlook them or we do not recognize the really good signs about some of the green flags. So what do his actions and his words really mean? And how can you be in your powerful feminine through the whole process so that you're actually magnetizing all of that to you and he's showing up in a different way to you because of how you are being, right? So all of this, this helps create this really solid foundation for an authentic relationship with the right man for you, without games, without manipulation, someone who really, really shows up for you, like 100,000% he's showing up for you. So if this live spoke to you, don't wait to get in touch with me. Aligned action means your soul says move and you move, right? There are no accidents. So if you're here right now and you're here with me at the end of this live, that is a huge sign. Just take a deep breath and check in. If there's activated energy inside of you, like excited, scared, anxious, it's all the same. It means this is for you. And so I just want you to know that the most incredible transformation is possible for you. That is what I am here for. And so I, I re ask that you send me a DM so we can set up a consult call so we can talk about doing this work together. So on the call, we'll just be discussing what do you want? Where are you at in your journey with men? What is your history with men? 
What have been your frustrations? What are you up against right now? And I'll explain how we work together. You know, we'll talk about what that looks like, answer any questions you have, and hopefully it's a really great fit. And then we start working together on all of this. All of this shifts so fast, so fast. It's not complicated, it's not hard, but it's not something we can do on our own. We need someone else to hold the space for that. Um, someone else who can, can see the things that we aren't seeing in ourselves and help us see ourselves in a different way, right? I see in you the things that you're like, I don't see how I'm so amazing. I don't see how I'm so beautiful. I don't see how I'm so worthy. And I, I'm just showing you. It's like holding up a mirror. Look, look at the real you. Look at how amazing you are. Look at what you're doing here that's not working. Look at what you're doing here. This is, you know, so it's all, it's just guidance. It's guidance and it's helping you just fully align with who you really are. So I'm going to just take a look at the comments here. So Stacy said, this is for me. Wow, comes at the perfect time. Oh, I'm so glad. Do you guys have any questions for me? Any questions for me? <laughs> Sarah, you're totally right. I'm gonna cut ties with my cute casual man. Yes, you absolutely need to do that. <laughs> I can't wait for you to be my client. I appreciate you too so much. Any questions or did this make sense to everyone, by the way? Any questions that you have? Did it make sense? Do we follow? I feel really passionate about this. Stacy, thank you. Everything is landing. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Well, then I'm going to sign off. Hold on, there's more coming. Made sense, Hester. Okay, awesome. And I will see you ladies soon. So much love. Bye.